Hello everyone. Thank you for joining in today. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. My name is Nikita Tibriwal and I'm a lead data scientist at Salesforce. Before you begin to create any visualization or uh, recreate any uh, visualization, it is very important that you ha have a clear understanding of the data and the data types that are involved uh, in the process. Let's understand them with the help of a common graphic. Any sports or fitness fans in here? I'm pretty sure you'll guess that where this is coming from. Yes, this is a dashboard from the Strava app, which is a popular fitness app. The data that is shown here is uh, last four weeks activities. Uh, that is, uh, there are 27 activities by the subscribers. It is showing the distribution of the number of hours trained uh, by the week by different activities. Uh, it is also demonstrating the total number of distance uh, using a calendar format. The bubble charts are indicate the bubbles are indicating a lot of uh, uh, the distance that is uh, covered by the athlete by each day. So let's uh, see the data types involved in here. Let's start with the quantitative data or any variable that is a uh, uh, that is a precise number. In this case, it will be total activities, total distance and the number of hours trained. Qualitative, quantitative data can further be uh, described as discrete or continuous. Any value which is uh, finite or countable is uh, uh, usually termed as discrete, in this case total number of activities. Whereas the uh, variables which are measured and have values within a range are termed as continuous. In this case it is total distance. Apart from this, we also see a number of uh, uh, variables here, such as days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the type of the activity, ride, walk, run, swim, etc. These are all categorical variables or qualitative data. The one which labels your data or groups them into an effective manner. Categorical data can further be classified as nominal or ordinal. Nominal is the one which is having a finite set of values, uh, but they're not usually ordered. And ordinal data is usually having a ranker or an order associated with it. As a data scientist, it is important to understand these data types and appropriate choices to visually encode this, uh, uh, visually encode this data. Now let's look at the data relationships that exist between these data types. Moving on from the Strava use case, we'll talk about examples associated with the Netflix domain. First step, what is nominal comparison? Nominal comparison is the simple comparison of quantitative values by the category. Example, number of viewers that you see on an OTT platform like Hulu, Disney, Hotstar, Netflix, etc. Next, time series. This tracks the changes in the value of a consistent metric over a period of time. For example, the daily monthly viewers on Netflix. Correlation. This helps us demonstrate the relationship between two or more values. Uh, it could be positive or negative. For example, the viewership by tenure of subscription. Ranking. Uh, this helps us show the values, uh, how the values compare to each other in terms of relative magnitude. For example, your top watch shows uh, which are ranked by the viewers. Next we have is deviation. This helps us examine how the data points relate to each other, particularly how far they are from the mean. For example, Netflix shows watched during the holidays versus regular days. Distribution. This shows the data distribution offered sent, uh, often around a central value and it will help us gauge the shape of the data. For example, this shows views viewed by the hour of the day. Part to whole relationship. This shows how the data compares to a larger whole. Example, the percentage of viewers across the geography. Hierarchical and connections. When there is a relationship between the various entities involved. Example, uh, analyzing the series watched by me and my network and their network. That's, that's like a network uh, analysis. One other thing that you might have noticed while I was talking about these data relationships is the small icons uh, or the uh, small icons that were associated with each type of relationship. They must have helped you grasp the information that I was sharing a little faster. That is another testimony of why visual aid is very important in uh, data consum consumption. 
Now that we understand the various types of data and the relationship between them, it's time to visually encode them, which means we need to choose the right chart type. Like it is said, the quality of your life is determined by the choices that you make. Similarly, the quality of your data story is determined by the visualization you choose. Yes, it is that important. But don't worry, I'm going to make it really simple for you. I'll share a three-step process uh, which is designed by the experts from Google. It is called as the Question, Goal and Outcome Framework. Now, before we use this framework or to decide the right chart type, let's use this framework on a day-to-day -day scenario. Let's say the scenario is I want to eat an ice cream and I'm trying to decide the choice of the flavor. I'm trying to decide which flavor should I indulge in. And there could be multiple choices like a chocolate ice cream, a vanilla ice cream, mango or strawberry. Now chocolate is usually my favorite, uh, but I'm thinking that it's a hot summer afternoon. So probably I should uh, go for something light and refreshing. You see how intuitively my mind was already using this framework. The question was which ice cream should I eat? The goal was hot summer afternoon, so something refreshing, soothing, probably a seasonal fruit ice cream. And the outcome, like you must have guessed, is a mango ice cream. Well, uh, I had a series of choices and I could choose something that just meets my goal and it's a mango ice cream. And come on, who doesn't love a mango ice cream in summers? With this, we can use this framework to make a little, uh, a little more serious set of decisions. In this case, choosing the right chart type. The challenge of choosing the right uh, ch uh, visualization is finding the goal beneath the data question. And broadly speaking, the goal can be of four different types. Number one, how the values compare to each other. Number two, how is the data distributed? Number three, how is the data composed? And number four, how the values relate to each other. Once you are able to associate one of these goals to the data question that you're trying to answer, you can choose the outcome by using the infographic here. Yes, there are multiple chart types within each of the sections within each of the goals, but I think those are pretty similar and just understanding and familiarizing the nuances of these chart types can help you take it one step further. For the sake of putting this framework into action, let me put, uh, let me put on the hat of a marketing analyst and create some visualizations for my dear colleagues. Uh, the morning is dedicated to coffee and the problem that we want to understand is the acquisition matrix Which is essentially answering questions like oh, are we getting enough customers? Where are we getting them from etc? Let's start with one primary question How many new users are we acquiring every day since that's a question the goal here is We want to compare values what values the number of users over time that is days and as you must have guessed, the outcome is a line chart. Yes, the lines chart effectively demonstrates the trend in the number of users that we are acquiring every day. There is an expected dip that is observed on the weekends. And a line chart does the uh, exact purpose of dem uh, presenting the information. Let's deep dive and see where these users are coming from. So the question is, what channels are these new users coming from? The goal is to display the composition of data, that is which channel source the users are coming from over the time. That is, we're still comparing the number of users across the days. But here we want to break it by the composition that uh, of the uh, composition in the, in the sense, we want to break it by the channels uh, source uh, channel. The outcome here we can use an area chart. The area chart effectively demonstrates the two information. One is uh, how, how many users we are acquiring by the day and then it is also helping us break it by the uh, source of the channel. We can clearly uh, see that uh, we are uh, getting maximum number of users uh, via organic search. That means we're doing pretty good with the search engine rankings. Next step, um, we see that even referrals, referrals are getting us a good amount of users. So let's let's focus upon that uh, and deep dive further. The question is which referrals are driving the most traffic uh, to our website, which means we want to compare the values. Uh, that is the number of sessions across categories. That is the referrals. And the outcome here is 
we can use a bar chart. A bar chart is effectively demonstrating which referrers are driving most traffic to a website. We can see we are getting it most from the partner uh, uh, um, partner referral and then from the uh, blog, which is a cool blog. If you want to analyze, if you want to break it down further and see which uh, referrers are getting the traffic from the desktop versus which referrers are getting it from the mobile devices, uh, the goal would be comparing the number of sessions across the categories, again the referrers, but by looking at the composition within each bar, that is by mobile versus traffic. And here we can effectively use a stack bar charts. I think that uh, that gives you a pretty good idea of how we are using the question, goal and outcome framework using the guidance that we shared above. We can similarly apply this framework to the other chart types that are there uh, I'll not uh, uh, I'll not go it uh, by uh, all, the th all the three steps, but just uh, but uh, for the sake uh, of uh, refreshing our memories, just let's quickly understand what uh, uh, what are these chart types. Uh, where do we use scatter chart, bubble chart, and histogram? A scatter plot is used to establish the relationship between two variables, uh, particularly uh, if you want to establish a correlation. A bubble chart is used when you want to uh, represent nominal data and when we want to compare them using some values. Where a whereas a histogram would be used uh, to show the distribution of continuous or discrete data by condensing the information into form of intervals. These are the fundamental charts that will come handy to you in your everyday analysis. Insist on using these simple charts upfront uh, and then using the uh, advanced visualizations only for a specific business scenario. These visualizations can at times be complex to understand, so we should use them very carefully. A waterfall visualization highlights the increments and decrements of a value of matrix over time or category. Analysts can use this widget to identify the aspects of the business that are contributing to the fluctuations in a value. The visualization also comes handy if you want to do a what if analysis. For example, in this case, it is showing what are the various factors that are contributing to the company profit. The product revenue and the services revenue are adding to the profit revenue, whereas the cost or the different kind of costs like the fixed cost and the variable cost are uh, obviously taking away value from the profit. Next is the funnel chart. The funnel chart is used to visualize the progressive production in the data as it passes from one stage to another. Data in each of these phases is represented as different portions of 100% that is the whole. For example, here we show the licenses provisioned to the users in, at the top. How, out of these users, how many users have activated the licenses? Out of the activated users, how many users are using it on a monthly basis? And then out of that, how many users are using it on a daily basis? This funnel helps uh, gives us a very clear picture of the product adoption. Next is my favorite chart, a network chart. We all have seen uh, the use of this uh, in establishing the clusters of the COVID-19 affected people. It allows you to quickly and easily identify the relationship among entities and clusters. It is also used for social network analytics. On the right, we have a Sankey diagram. A Sankey visualization is used to depict a flow of value, is used to depict a flow from the uh, flow from one set of values to another. The things being connected are called as the nodes and the connections are called as the links. Sankeys are best used when you want to show many to many relationship amongst multiple domain or multiple parts through a stages uh, through the stages of an activity. For example, in my current project, I'm using this chart to uh, establish how the users interact with the process uh, with with my product. Basically, the sequence of activities based on the events starting from their login to their last activity uh, on the product. It helps us to understand how the users are using the product, the sequence of activities that they're following and where they're dropping off. We can make certain decisions like uh, uh, improving the product, a feature where they're not using it effectively or where they're not able to navigate it as per the design. Uh, next up, we have a heat map. 
I think all the GitHub users will uh, very well recognize it. A heat map shows the contribution, uh, in this case, uh, contributions over the period of the year. It represents categorical data using the intensity of the color and the size of the tile. A variant of the heat map is Corelogram. We often use this in our exploratory data analysis, uh, specifically when we are building predictive models to understand the relationship between the variables. Another variation is a uh, Coropleth map, which shows the distribution of the values on a geographical um, area by using the again color uh, by using intense uh, by using various color codes now that we understand how to uh, choose the right chart type and what are some of the advanced uh, visualizations that are uh, commonly used in the industry let me also share some of the tips that i follow while creating these visualizations number one definitely define the intent with your users who is going to use the chart and i'll suggest rely on the simple charts upfront Understand and clean the data. Definitely look out for inconsistencies. Uh, analyze your rows and columns and ensure that the data quality is good. You can experiment with structure and style. You can uh, draft various versions of the design and test and iterate with uh, test and iterate them with the various users uh, so that uh, we understand how the users are consuming the information. Based on the feedback and the impressions that we collect from the users, you can refine and implement the charts uh, or the visualizations that you're creating. Some of the common uh, do's and don'ts that I follow while creating the visualizations is, I usually represent one category with one color. Obviously, we don't show hundreds of categories together on uh, one single uh, screen. So uh, that's that's number one tip. Order the data in, uh, in a logical hierarchy, in a logical format. That's very important, easy to understand. Use uh, callouts or highlights or narratives uh, to uh, highlight the important information. Visualize the data uh, in a way which is easy for the users to compare the values. And you can add little icons to enhance the comprehensions and uh, reduce unnecessary labelings as well. On the don'ts side, I'll suggest not to use high contrasting colors like red and yellow or any other contrasting combinations which could not, which may not be pleasing to the eyes. Not recommended to use 3D charts because they may skew the perception of the visualization. Don't add any chart junk, remove anything which is ornamental, anything like shadows, um, illustrations um, or grid lines at times they may even be unnecessary so just remove anything that can distract from your data don't use more than six colors at a time in a single layout that is uh, that is what uh, that is uh, the essential point where i was saying that we use one color to represent in each category but at the same time we don't represent a lot of categories with a lot of different colors in a single layout and then obviously the fonts, they should also be uh, standard and they should not be distracting. The focus should always be on the data.